Online assessment is generally pursued as an in-class practice between the students and the instructors. However, research-based evidence retrieved as part of this project suggests that for an effective online assessment, the implementers need to consider several different factors operating at different levels. The selection of assessment method and successful implementation of this method is a matter of preference, attitude and practice on the one hand, and careful consideration of macro, meso, micro levels on the other. In other words, the decision for online assessment demands careful consideration of institution-related, discipline-related, course-related, teacher-related, and student-related factors. These factors determine the suitability of the climate for an implementation of specific assessment methods. One consideration in online assessment practice is related to the online assessment methods. There are many assessment methods, take-home exams, assignments, peer assessments, self-assessment, team assessment, portfolio assessment, oral examinations, e-examinations, and reports are some of the most commonly employed assessment methods by instructors in higher education. These methods are not different from the traditional face-to-face -face settings. Another careful consideration in online assessment practice is related to the online platform and digital tools that are used for online assessment. Effectiveness of online assessment is not independent of online platforms and digital tools. Moodle, Easy, Kahoot are some of the most commonly utilized platforms for online assessment. The compatibility between digital platforms and assessment methods is important in online assessment practices. It is important to state that summative assessment is still very dominant, the written exam is still uh, the most common uh, practice and instructors rarely consider alternative to written exams. Studies examining attitudes toward assessment methods are limited. Both instructors and students show positive attitudes toward self-assessment, peer assessment, online peer assessment, and e-exams. Satisfaction level of students from face-to-face -face and online assessment is close to each other. Online exam satisfaction is consistently high across studies. However, studies consistently emphasize that proper online exam conditions should be created to maintain high satisfaction of students. Online assessment has several benefits, which may of course differ according to the specific on assessment method used. For example, the self-assessment method increases the autonomy uh, and motivation of learners, enabled high quality work, and uh, better grades and was found to be effective in assessing performance. As another example, portfolio assessment also advances advanced learning through empowerment and higher autonomy provided to students. Team assessment enhanced intercultural collaboration while ensuring the construction of new knowledge and better understanding of the content. E-assessment uh, was shown to, be, uh, to enable greater partnership, student engagement, and assessment of different cognitive abilities. However, online assessment methods may have limitations as well. Low inter-rater accuracy and bias, difficulties in organizing feedback are some of the main limitations. Considering the limitations, our review suggests that greater attention should be devoted for fairness, validity, and reliability in online assessments. Besides, the teachers need to align their assess uh, assessment uh, to the content of the curriculum. When we consider the preferences dimension of uh, the PAP framework, we understand that traditional methods of assessment are preferred by both students and instructors. The review of the literature in the Remote Edu project suggests that both instructors and students prefer exams with multiple choice questions or take-home exams, assignments, and combination of different assessment methods, for example, quiz plus exams. On the other hand, oral exams, uh, group work, short written assignments, and e-exams were the least preferred ones by students and instructors. Taken together, the results emphasize that traditional methods dominate, dominate the preferences of the students and instructors. It is important to note that there is a gap between perception and practice as well. Teachers tend to prefer formative assessment, but they tend to use more summative assessment. Once we clarify the preference, attitude, and practice triangle, it is important to consider the factors that operate at different levels 
uh, which are critical for online assessment. Factors related to effective online assessment can be grouped uh, under macro, meso and micro levels. Macro level factors refer to national and institutional uh, factors. Macro level factors operate as meta level regulators. As a result, the instructors need to consider the situational factors, for example, available infrastructure, the legal basis, for example, if there is a legal code related to protection of personal data, if there is a policy specified by national level regulatory bodies, for example, the Higher Education Council in Turkey and the national level assessment culture. The following questions need to be answered by the instructors and or academic unit before online assessment. What are the situational factors relevant to online assessment? What are the imperatives emanating from legal codes? Is there a national level policy for online assessment? What is the implication of assessment culture at national level? Meso-level factors are related to policies and practices at institutional levels. Policies and practices of the universities may put imperatives on the instructors in their selection and implementation of assessment methods. The support mechanisms can be formal or informal, the classroom size, the physical infrastructure, the nature of the discipline, the type of the university, and the assessment culture of the university play a role in shaping the PAP of the instructors. Support mechanisms may include forums, panels, networking opportunities, collaboration and coordination meetings, providing databases to widen knowledge and get good practices, providing access to where various uh, external resources is also an option to widen the knowledge base for online assessment. In other words, teachers are recommended to answer the following questions at meso level before their online assessment practices. What are the institutional support mechanisms for online assessments available at university and or departmental levels? Is the specific assessment method compatible with the classroom size? Which assessment method is compatible with the content or topic that I want to cover in my assessment? What is the available institutional infrastructure in terms of hardware or software for online assessment? Do we have a policy bounding the practices of online assessment? What is the implication of assessment culture at institutional level? Micro-level factors refer to individual level factors, and we can consider, of course, at individual level, the instructors and the students. Characteristics pertaining to students and or instructors need to be decoded before deciding on online assessment method uh, and practice of these specific methods. Instructor-related characteristics are various. Workload, teaching experience and competencies, for example, digital competencies, assessment competencies, cultural competencies, pedagogical competencies, play a role in the selection and effective implementation of online assessment methods. Questions that are likely to guide online assessment practices of the instructors at micro level are, does my workload allow me to use certain assessment methods? Do I have the experience to use specific assessment methods? Do I have necessary uh, competencies to implement an online assessment method are some of the questions.